Thanks for tuning in. I'd like to show you a really easy way to work on your hands for more strength and flexibility and pain relief. We use our hands all day long and take them for granted until we start to get some stiffness, aches and pains, arthritic feelings, tightness, contractures. In fact, I am one of those people that developed a contracture in my hand called a Duptrin's contracture. And you can see it right here. It's got like that little bit, it looks like the tendon is, is thick, thickened there. And then there's also one right over here that feels almost like a nodule. That one goes to my thumb. This hand gets has a little teeny bit. It was trying to start, but it's mostly in my right hand. And it happened years ago, and it hasn't gotten any worse, thank goodness, because this can be a de degenerative situation, especially if you continue to use your hands in the same way all day long. So I have a way to cross-train whatever stress I put on my hands, and that's using these wakers. You know, many of you are familiar with these because we have them for the feet, but we can use them for the hands too. And when you look at the similarity in the design of the hands and the feet, you've got all these little QB kind of bones. These are your carpals. And then you have these longer bones, which are the, the these, these are your metacarpals. And then you've got joints and flanges, which are like your fingers and, and all the way they bend. And of course, your thumb is quite unique as it's like a saddle joint. It's different. It's circular, but it also you know, is a very important um, thing that we have that is able to, we're able to grasp and hold on to things. So we want to keep all this aligned and functioning. So you can use, do this same thing standing at your desk. Um, if you want more weight, you can kneel and actually get into on all fours like tabletop. Uh, I'm sitting on a gold ball right now. That's just so that I can get a little bit of weight over these. And then I also can, that takes all the pressure off my knees. And I'm going to put these somewhere about hips distance apart, make sure that I can lean into it. And I'm also going to make sure that I have my shoulder to elbow to wrist nice and aligned. So let's start at the very back. So we're going to start just behind the wrist. Use the top of the dome and just place your hand on there. You can press the outside and mold to the middle and find that inside joint, like all those lines. And you can reach the fingers long and bring down the fifth finger, the fourth, the third, the second, the first. And again, if you want more weight, you can just get put press weight on there and just press right into that waker. Likewise, if it's really tender, you might just work on stretching, connecting into those nubs, and reaching and wrapping around. Really important that you activate the fingers, though. You don't want to just be lazy like this. We want that wide and long and strong. Then we're going to walk it back just a little bit. So we kind of got that spot there. Now we're going to go for those little cubie bones. So walk it back a little bit. Same thing. Spread those fingers. Reach back and just wrap around. This might not feel like a lot's going on without a lot of weight, but if you have very painful hands, especially like inflammatory arthritis, this is going to be enough. If you want more pressure, you can be fully weight bearing over it like so. So, just, or just feeling these motions because this is nice for the wrists to reach. I'm going to bring this in a little bit and then just rock a few times, right? Then we're going to go right for the palm, right in here, getting more of those, those working towards those metacarpals in the middle of the, and you can really press on the outside and mold that around, reach through the thumbs, reach the fingers, press there. Even with this little amount of weight, it feels really good. And it gives that doming effect that the hands are supposed to have. So I keep adjusting so that I keep my shoulder right over there. I love the feeling of a little bit more weight. I'm going to stretch those fingers and then tap and wrap them around. Really stretch those fingers. Tap and wrap them around. I can press around the outside and mold this way. I can walk to the back and mold this way. All these little moves are great. So we went here. We went just in front. We went through the whole palm. Now we're going to really focus on these knuckles. So get the fifth 
fourth, third, second, first, right on there. And then stretch those fingers around. So sometimes if your fingers are crooked or, you know, you might need a little help getting them around. So I'm going to get that fifth knuckle, fourth, third, second, first. Reach those, those fingers around. Wide fingers and press there. And I can just bend, do like a little micro bend in my elbows. I can, you want to feel that you're also, like I can feel that I'm not jamming my wrists and I'm keeping some space there as I bend and straighten. It allows me to do that. I can get more weight on there and come back. Just that is like nice little bit of ease into that joint. Then we're going to take each finger and spread it. So I'm going to show you from the side so you can really see. Spread that finger and get the joint to the floor. And then you can press. These are like called flanges and these are all joints. And you have an opportunity to really straighten out the finger too if they start to crook. So I'm going to do this from the side so you can see better like that. So I'm just going to slide that fifth finger down on both sides. The others can hang out and really press that finger. I'm going to do one at a time here. Get this one really down there. Press, press, press. Lift and pull. You keep that in length in this back outside back to the mat here. And then do the other side. Get the fifth finger. You can press those little flanges in there and pull back. You can hold it like so. And then shake that out. And then let's do the fourth finger. Now, my third and fourth finger are a little, this is where the contracture is. So it's really interesting because I have a harder time stretching that finger back because that contracture doesn't want to let me. So I'm just going to work the best I can, press there. And it's also like you can, even though the, the other fingers are out of the way, I'm going to really try to find strength in that finger, press it and release it. I'm holding the thumb, just pressing my knuckle into the floor, and then I can pull that whole line back, that fourth finger, all the way back to the carpals in the wrist. And then do it on the other side. It's quite tight on this side too, even though I don't have the contracture. It's probably a little bit weaker. Press and release. These little nubs really give you a lot of pressure. You could do both at the same time. Just, just ease that like that. And if you don't want to work that hard, you can just take each finger and stretch. Ooh, it's got a nice little knuckle pop. So you can work one at a time, really giving a little bit more pressure. Or you can just do a gentle stretch like this. I'm focusing on that middle finger. And then the first, the, the second finger. Try to get that knuckle down. That's why I like to switch from side to side and really get that. And then the thumb. Now the thumb sometimes feels really good to just press on the top or because you don't want to jam it too much. And it's nice to get this whole bone here. So you can take it to the side. You can twist around a little bit. You can, you know, if it's starting to change, this joint can get really and this joint can change a lot. So you can just stimulate different bits of that, like so. And press. And even just pressing and getting into this webbing is really nice too. This feels so good, because this is a major acupuncture point too. So if you spread that thumb around and that finger, you can use this hand and just hold that point right there. It's large intestine four. And it's a really great point for pain relief in the body. So you're stimulating that point as you press there. And we all know that about, you know, that there's reflex points in the feet, but there's also reflex points all over the hands. And there's a whole systems of acupuncture and pressure points and Korean hand therapy that you know that, that maps out the whole body in the hand so again just like when you work on your feet when you work on your hands you're really working on your whole body and don't worry these little 
bumps will go away. It's just the nubs. And then just, you know, nice warm, keep that tissue nice and warm. It's good to uh, then rub some essential oils or a nice arnica oil or lotion into your hands after you work them. And you can just feel that you have more ease and flexibility. And I actually don't feel that little nodule anymore that was getting my attention. So I will probably do this every day for a while until I really get my hands in a good place. And then I can just maintain it by doing it maybe a couple times a week. So thanks for joining. Hope this helps.